What is the future of Scrum? Is Scrum doomed? Are we witnessing the end of Scrum? And between blog posts and social media posts, this seems to be all the rage these days. Not a long time ago, I was really seeing the same thing going on with Agile. Agile is dead. Agile is over. It's like the Schrodinger's cat, right? Oh, it's alive. No, it is dead. And I don't personally buy into that. But then I thought about, you know what? Why don't we have a conversation? Because every time we have those very romanticized or dramatic ideas around the topic, I think it's, it's interesting to see where it comes from and where it can lead us. So if you want to understand a little bit why Scrum seems to be falling out of favor and what is in store for us, if this is true or not, that's something we could explore in this video. So if you're interested, let's get started. Scrum is not new. Scrum started in the 1990s. So if you really think about it, it's been a long time, 20 plus years down the road. It's not something that started yesterday, right? I personally enjoy Scrum. I have used it as a software developer. I have been a Scrum master and I have coached teams that wanted to adopt and improve their ways of working using Scrum. I personally enjoy it. I actually do have a free resource for you if you're interested. It's called Scrum in Practice is my ebook. It's a fun, quick, interesting read. You get the whole idea in one sitting. So just check it out if that's something that interests you. And I don't seem to be the only one. Scrum is the most widely used and mentioned framework by name, especially in the world of software, but not only there. And it's something that you can see in the State of Agile report. It really did reach a massive audience. If you really think about it, it's so widely spread that even frameworks that came after were interested in how do we scale this thing? How we can make a full fleet organization with thousands of people being able to use it. So you have things like less, like Nexus, safe, you can love it or hate it, but hey, it's there and it is based off of Scrum. Having achieved such a, a massive wide audience, I think one of the things that we can say for sure is that Scrum has been tested and retested like nothing else really. It's really been used in the field. And when you hear about things like the Spotify model, so much of what we know today from modern uses of Agile stem from people just toying with getting curious about this framework and maybe also even other more serious practitioners that try to really push the limits of what could be done. Is it just for one team? Is it just for teams or can it be used as well, um, you know, at organizational scale? So it brought a lot of questions, interesting questions, and people try to use Scrum to really not only bring those questions about, but to solve them. Can it really be used as a way for organizations to achieve some level of agility? Some very passionate people who defend Scrum says things like it's easy to understand and hard to master. I don't particularly find that sort of explanation useful. And I also don't think it's accurate. I think it's very simple to understand and it is also very simple to master. And in my opinion, what happens is that when you really pay attention to the framework and its simplicity, you can't ignore the prerequisites in the form of the values and how you really expect that work transitions and the level of trust that is required across everybody involved, not just team members, but even the stakeholders and the team and the involvement of, of managerial levels and etc. So I think one important thing to note is, is that if the prerequisites are not in place, you won't succeed with Scrum. Now, that's the thing that makes Scrum so great for early adopters. And you can think the people who are using that in the early 2000s or people who are using this right now in 2023 and are just starting with Agile, it will be really the same if you consider that these people have the early adopter temperament and approach. What do I mean by that? These are teams who are already at a certain level of autonomy. They have trust within the organization, trust and respect, uh, you know, within themselves as part of the team. They have created a, a space of psychological safety. They are really primed to just go and do great work and sit down and talk about the things that really don't work. So for those people, Scrum is just 
perfect. It's right there, readily accessible, and they, from the get-go, they can start having results. While Scrum will empower teams, it doesn't tell you anything about how to deal with the prerequisites to put Scrum in place. And you can say, well, it's not up to Scrum to do that, then that's fine. But that is a weakness that happens in the field. So you have no guidelines, you have no blueprint on how you can include other uh, layers of, of the hierarchy, especially when you're talking about management and senior level leadership. And let's face it, they are a big part of why and how an organization works the way it works. And that can go as far as you having a Scrum Masters as the protector of the team in approach I never really liked much but then you would have you know management ejected from the team you keep them apart and then the scrum master is kind of like the middleman and for the better of the worse you know they are taking the heat all the time I find this I really don't appreciate that way I think you should be figuring out ways in which the teams and their managers can and should be collaborating very strongly, very aligned in full partnership with a lot of respect, with a lot of trust. Because guess what? The number of organizations that are hierarchical and more structured is huge. That is just the reality. So that's one of the main points I would say. As business agility and all sorts of agility, adaptability, flexibility made its way into business and all sorts of organizations, of course, Scrum was the, you know, the favorite and it just hasn't yielded results that were compelling in the field. And once again, we can argue about why is that, but the reality of the matter is Scrum was really not created for that kind of space. So even though it has been tested and retested for decades now, it just didn't produce any valuable result for most organizations. So here maybe enters a little bit agile coaching. I can definitely tell uh, from my perspective and some people maybe from, you know, from my timeline and other people that I coached, uh, it feels like kind of like Scrum Mastering is a gateway to understanding that, wow, there is a, you know, a more elevated stance through which we can help teams and managers in organizations. It is at that point when you learn that Scrum is not enough. You know, you really need to understand what does organizational performance mean? How does culture, how does leadership style impact how all the system is designed in place around teams. You have to understand how to communicate with all sorts of layers in the hierarchy in an organization. You're not going to knock at the door of a senior vice president and talk to them about story points, will you? Or the uh, this is what we plan for the sprint and things of the nature. And, you know, and even coaching and facilitation. So facilitation is the ability to create dialogue among people. So it's, you know, so it's not the coach who needs to be relaying stuff all the time, but people actually start taking control and, and being bold and having the proper conversations that need to take place. Every Scrum Master, especially the ones that are beginning, will tell you like, well, this is a nightmare, you know, and, and the managers don't seem to understand. And you were both right, you and the manager, because the manager doesn't have to understand the Scrum stuff. And you probably should be understanding a little bit more of, of business, you know, having more business acumen and um, understanding what is really important at the level of the organization. Because in the end, a few things are happening here. One is that the healthy performance of a team should reflect in the bottom line of an organization. And many other places in the organization will need to shift to accommodate a team that is operating at max performance. So there is a cap. Your team now is the best that it could be. If the rest of the system is not changing around it, probably your team performance could be even better because they are now constrained by the rest of the system. They are like the, the most performing screw in a big engine. So you see how that is not really so helpful. So as a coach, you need to move around and help other managers and other senior sponsors understand and respond to what is going on and adapt, adapt their styles of leadership, adapt their department, have conversations with other members of senior staff, um, you know, and so so it's it's really a complex environment where you can see none of that is related to Scrum. And having to do all that, it's also not something you're going to get from Scrum Master School. But once all that is done, and that is really the heavy lifting, that's really the, the biggest part of the work of an Agile coach, whether you call yourself organizational coach or enterprise coach or plain simple, my favorite Agile coach, 
that is really the most complicated and the most necessary part of the job because the scrum will come after or XP or Kanban or a favorite in-house developed framework. All that good stuff can happen, but the prerequisites that need to be, to be tackled for scrum probably also for other pieces of agility as well. That is what really is important. That is what, you know, you're not gonna find a specific playbook for. So what to do with Scrum then? Where do I see Scrum? Do we just abandon it and only use it when we are amazingly elevated in our organization? I would say yes and. So first thing is, I still find Scrum is a great way to start testing the waters of agility. I really do. No matter what your organization looks like, you're gonna take that, start applying, see what it hurts, see what's hard, and what you're gonna do about it. You're gonna notice, wow, we are unable to produce anything by the end of a sprint. Is this because the sprint is too short or is it because our process is a mess? Or we then realize actually we don't even understand what our process looks like. I thought you needed to review my part. Do you need to review my part? No, I don't read. You know, you start having all these conversations that really pop up. A lot of assumptions that you had, they get resolved. You don't need necessarily in your organization to have Scrum Masters and product owners but the fact that you try to identify wow who takes care of intake of requests because you know i'm a software developer i need to crank code here i can't spend my time talking to people and then getting interrupted and then go back to code get interrupted again look at a backlog so you have those discussions about well how do we organize our product roadmap uh, you know who takes care of timelines you also responsabilizes um the the team so it used to be a sharon the main architect who just has to answer a bunch of stuff about the dates and now as a team we have to collectively start caring about these things it might not be our favorite but it also doesn't take a hundred percent of our time we're going to have some dedicated time to sit down as a group and have a conversation about these things. As you can see, I hope this is all golden info. Use it. A lot of people get offended when I talk, you know, about the, the, this gateway for agility. I see it's something marvelous that a framework like Scrum can do that. I don't think, I don't think it's disrespectful and I don't think it diminishes it. I think it puts it in a very, very nice place. You know, can you, can you imagine how you know, how many things can you say, well, this is a catapult, this is a launch pad for all the agility that we could do in our workplace? Because hear me out, honestly, if I've been around the block for over 20 years and I will tell you this, at some point, shape or form, every organization will have within a team or within a department, they will have their own processes with, you know, with their own gates and pieces. It's, it's always, when it's performing, it is always customized. You can't take a process that is refined by a fantastic team and plug now in your team. Because if you were giving a chance, starting with the same process that they started, your team, given the abilities that they have, the environment that they have, they would have customized that in an entirely different way. Okay, now closing up. Do I see Scrum disappearing? I do not. No, Scrum won't disappear. But I do think that the outlook of the framework and its usage across several different organizations will start shifting a bit. I also think that positions such as product owner and scrum masters will be gaining maybe different nomenclature or just becoming very unique to what an organization needs. So in some, you let's talk about the scrum master, for example. I see you, my friend, as an agile coach. Those are the skills you need, okay? You scrum is just a fraction of what you need to know. Uh, you definitely want to understand, you know, theory of constraints. You want to understand a lot of lean thinking. You want to understand how to um, to manage and control processes and help others do the same. And a lot of the human skills like coaching and facilitation, because those are, you know, the bridges that will be formed across teams and across the stakeholders and senior sponsors of your teams. So I think the future is bright for you as a, you know, as a professional in the realm of agility. If you are a product owner, I think things are really going more um, towards what it actually needs to be, which is uh, product management. And there's so much 
technology of understanding what is a good product, what is the market and, and things of that nature. Um, you know, and it's possible that in some organizations you were a bit of both and, you know, the roles that already exist in an organization, they don't need to shift because of a framework. So you might have an operations manager and a delivery manager and an intake first responder and these people together if you were thinking of scrum they will kind of like share a little bit of the responsibilities uh, you know of the uh, of product owner and scrum master and 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 things of that nature i think preserving what works in your organization and adding color if you will it's where we are going, very personalized approaches, and you have to probably be investing in your skills in understanding how to uh, really be masterful and helpful in, in that landscape. And I think that's wonderful. I think it's really exciting, and I hope that you are too. So that was the conversation I wanted us to have, my friend. I hope you're leaving today uplifted, excited. I hope this video was useful. In any case, I'll stop here. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.